As we come to you tonight there online, welcome uh, to this Wednesday night of Redemption Church service. We believe that God has some good things in store for us, don't we, congregation? And we're so glad to be gathered in His name tonight. And you can be seated in the house. And, um, you know, tonight I'm coming with, uh, to you from a different seat. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually there, and this is Carly Byron. Hi. And she's joining us uh, tonight. And so I'm here filling in for Eddie. And so uh, it's a little different, but I believe that God has some good mm -hmm. things that we're going uh, to share with you tonight. Um, so, Carly, why don't you just say a few words yeah, to I'm the so people? Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. I'm really anticipating what God's going to do tonight. I, I, really I am do. too. I am too. We're going to talk about healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something from the Word of God that a lot of people do not even know is available mm -hmm. to the body of Christ, what Jesus yeah. has sure. done for us. So we're going to talk about healing. And I know many people here, uh, but there will be some that, mm -hmm. that really don't know that much about healing. So we're going to dig yes. into that. And, uh, and just have a good time looking at the Scripture and seeing what our Lord has done for us. Yes. You know, before we do that, though, um, we're going to take a moment and we're going to receive our evening offering mm -hmm. here tonight. And this is uh, a night where here in the church we receive uh, our Wednesday night offering. And you may be online, and if you want to join us in giving, you're welcome to do that. You know, we're uh, taking the gospel forth and around the world, really, and we're reaching a lot of people. And you know, mm -hmm. Carly, it's so exciting because just about every week, people are coming to know yes, the Lord. It really is amazing. It really mm -hmm. is. And so you're a part of that, the people who mm -hmm. give and uh, participate in uh, tithes and offerings. You're a, a partner with us in this gospel work that we are in. So we want to remind you, the scripture says that when you give, God will give back to you. We don't back up on that and we don't apologize because that comes straight from the book of Luke and it was Jesus' words. And so we believe it and we know that's not why we give though. We give because we love the Lord. We want to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And the things that we've been blessed with in our life, mm -hmm. we want them to come to other that's people right. too. Amen. So that's the whole purpose in that. And tonight, um, you can give, uh, of course, online, and you can give through text, and you can mail in your gifts if you want to do that. And I'm sure there's some things on the screen there for those of you online that can uh, participate with us. And we appreciate you uh, taking part mm -hmm. with us in what we're doing here in Redemption Church from Knoxville, Tennessee. Amen. Let's just pray. We're going to pray over the offering, but we're going to pray for what we're going to mm -hmm. do tonight here. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every person who is um, giving in this offering tonight through their tithes and offerings. And we ask, Lord, that you bless them, that you bless the labor of their hand, that you multiply back into their life abundant blessings, Lord, that you open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings that there's not even room enough in their own life to contain it, Lord. And we thank you for it. We thank you for this gospel message that is going forth in power and demonstration. And tonight, Lord, as we open your word, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We just don't want to speak words, but we want to speak words that your spirit uh, desires to communicate and penetrate hearts and minds. And we give ourselves to you tonight for that. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be in church on Wednesday it night? It yeah. is. And I want to say something to the people watching yes. online if you don't care. One, we're thrilled that you're here. If you're watching online, we just want to say welcome. Yes. And we would love to hear from you. We have a free gift card that we give our online and in-person guests. So if you're here for the first time, text welcome to the number that's on your screen. That's 865-432-1323. And we would just love, we'd love to get to talk to you. The other thing is we want to invite you to Easter. 
Yes, right? yes. April 17th at 10.30 a.m., we're going to be here celebrating Resurrection Sunday, and we have a special guest, mm-hmm. Grammy Award-winning artist Jason Grab, which we are hearing a lot of excitement yes, about, yeah. and he's going to be leading worship that day, and it's going to be really, really special. So invite your friends and family and join us. It'll we're be We're going to have a great time. Yeah, it's going to be great fun. Great time. And it is a time of celebration, mm-hmm. you know. And I know maybe some people have not gone out and participated mm-hmm. in a church service, on Easter Sunday, get out yeah. and come to the house of the Lord. Yeah. I think that is so important. Mm-hmm. And I know sometimes people can't, and I obviously know that a lot of people who listen mm-hmm. to us are all over the mm-hmm. U.S. and other countries as mm-hmm. well. So I understand they won't mm-hmm. be joining and us. And we will be online that day. <laughs> so you can join us live online if you're in another state or country, and we'd love to have you. Yeah, yeah. We love our online friends. We do. We, we've made a lot of friends. You know, as we began here tonight, um, we did a uh, brochure, I guess mm-hmm. you call it, yes. uh, on biblical healing. And we passed that out here in the church mm-hmm. and gave it to people because what we wanted to do on, on uh, the inside of it, it has healing scriptures. And then if you look on the back of it, it has confessions for Mm -hmm. you to make over yourself. Now, I believe this with all of my heart. It's so important of what you say about yourself, Mm -hmm. not just in line with healing, but that's what we're going to talk about tonight is healing. It is so important what you say. Now, I shared this Mm -hmm. in church not too long ago. I began to do this. I began to take... um, the scripture and apply it to my life in areas where I've got things, physical things, that I want to be healed of. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we all probably have issues that, that we could say that. But I began, and I still, right now, I take those things before the Lord, and I, everything, I stop start from the top of my head, go to the bottom of my feet, whatever that may be, Mm -hmm. and I speak God's healing power over my body. Mm -hmm. I think that's powerful, Carly. It is. I really do. I I think it has great power Mm -hmm. in it. When Jesus spoke to things, he said, you can have what you say. When Mm -hmm. he spoke, things happened. Mm -hmm. And we can speak his word. Now, our word you know, our words can be powerful mm-hmm. too, but when you take God's word and you make it your word, that is powerful. Mm-hmm. And so I, that's what I started doing. That's what I'm continuing to do. And I'll keep doing that because I feel like it's something that God revealed to me mm-hmm. where we can um, get victory in our life over some areas. Now, tonight, as I open this, I want to talk to you from... Um, Isaiah 55 and verse number 8. I'm going to start there. And the reason I'm doing that is because that sets the tone for everything. Mm -hmm. It says, for my thoughts, whose thoughts? This is God. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Naturally speaking, we're not going to think like God thinks, Mm okay? Okay. Our minds have to be renewed, and then we can start doing that. He said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. You know, I had um, a false understanding um, growing up as a Christian, a young Christian, and I I didn't realize that healing was available, that it was in the Mm -hmm. covenant. I had no idea mm-hmm. that, it, that God had done that for us. And consequently, I just thought that, you know, some people might get healed, and, but most don't, and there's nothing that we can mm-hmm. do about it. But that really isn't true. You know, right. some people, they listen uh, to their grandmother because they love their grandmother. Their grandmother was spiritual. But he didn't say to think like your grandmother thought. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even say this. Now, this may offend some people. 
But he didn't say, think like your denomination thinks. Mm -hmm. You see, what I had to do at one particular time in my life with what my denomination thought on healing, well, really, they didn't even think that healing was available, that that passed away with the, you know, with the disciples, that was gone. And so if I leaned that way, I could never receive healing power from the Lord. But it's so foreign. Mm -hmm. If you start reading the Bible and you see everywhere that Jesus went when he preached the gospel, what did he do? He healed the sick mm -hmm. and he cast out devils. Mm -hmm. Well, see, some people today don't even believe that there is a devil. So they're not going to be casting the devil out. And the devil can wreak havoc in mm -hmm. their life. And there's nothing that they think they can do about it. However, that's a lie mm -hmm. of the devil. You need to think the thoughts of God. That's what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And what are his thoughts? His thoughts are Jesus, the healer, when he went forth in the earth, he expressed the mm -hmm. perfect will of the Father. He wasn't doing his own will. Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't going about doing his own will. Yeah. He was doing the will of the mm -hmm. Father. And so when we read this and it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, we have to back up on that, don't we? Mm -hmm. We have to back up. And we have to say, well, I do in myself. Mm -hmm. I want to say, I want my thoughts to be like God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be contrary in my thinking. Uh, and we're talking about healing. I don't want to be contrary to the Lord in that way. I want to think the way he thinks. For myself, I want to receive healing. For my family, mm -hmm. I want to receive mm -hmm. healing. And for people I love, the congregation, people you come in contact with that are suffering, I want to have the thoughts of God toward them, and mm -hmm. I want to be able to bring them the good news of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, a fallacy, and people think, and I've heard them say this. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, well, I'm just going to preach the gospel, and I'm going to leave that healing business alone. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we have heard it. But you can't separate it from the gospel. Again, you go back to Jesus, and you go back to his earthly ministry, and that's where we have to gauge mm -hmm. everything. We have to gauge it mm -hmm. there. And in his earthly ministry, wherever he went, he took healing to the people, and that is a part of the gospel. So you cannot separate it, and you don't want to separate it. Mm -hmm. So when I preach the gospel, I want to preach what Jesus preached. How about you? Amen. But see, if you go again, like with your denomination, and they have, okay, we can talk about this, and we can talk about this, but no, that's taboo. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about that. That's not, you know, that's not where it needs to be. That's not where we need mm -hmm. to go. And you know what I say? I've, been, I've done that before. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. I'm not falling for that one. Well, if the Bible says... Healing is available to us and that Jesus is the healer, then I am going to receive Amen. that. How about you? Amen. How about you online tonight? Amen. You can receive that. You may not know a lot about it. You may not understand a lot about it, but because Jesus says healing is available, and we're going to get into yes. more of that, because he says that it is then we need to choose to believe that rather than what a denomination would, mm -hmm. would tell us to believe. Now, I'm not here tonight to get down <laughs> on the denominations yeah. because we, we need the church. And if people are truly born again in those denominations, they're a part of the church. But if they choose not to believe and not to teach certain things then um, I'm not going along with that. And it takes some boldness. And I had to do mm -hmm. that, Carly. Eddie yeah. and I, we began to see things in the Bible about healing mm -hmm. and various other things. And, you know, we had people inside the church that we were in, and they said, well, if you believe that, 
you don't need to come here to church. Now that's hard, isn't it? That's really hard. But you know what? We stepped back and we didn't, we didn't let it go. We stepped back and we said, okay, then, then we've got to make sure that we know, that we know, that we know. And so we did that. Mm -hmm. And then when we did it, it was, nope, we can't stay here. We can't. We love the people. It's nothing against that. But we choose to believe God's word rather than the words of man. Amen. Let God be true and every man a liar if he disagrees with that. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a hard word, isn't it? But I didn't say it. Jesus did. So I choose to believe the mm -hmm. Lord. And a lot of people are missing out on exactly what you're saying. Yes. It is God's will to heal you. Yes. You don't have to live a life with the sickness and disease and everything like that. You just have to take hold of the truth that you're talking about. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Take hold of it. Mm -hmm. And how do you take hold of it? Number one, you take hold of it. You got to have faith in your heart. How did you get saved? How did I come to the Lord? Mm -hmm. I had to believe and have faith in the Word of God mm -hmm. that says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I did that, and he did what he said he would do. And he provided the way through the mm -hmm. cross, the shedding of his blood and all of that. So I believe it. So you receive healing mm -hmm. through faith. You know, some people say, well, I guess uh, if God wants to heal me, he'll just heal me. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, let me ask you this question. If God wants to save you, will he just save you? Mm -mm. You got to do what he says to do to come to the Lord to be born again. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. God doesn't, you know, he, he sent mm -hmm. Jesus for the whole world, but the whole world doesn't accept him. But there are those who do and mm -hmm. those who do by faith, uh, through the grace of God, mm -hmm. come to the Lord and they get born again. Mm -hmm. And so the healing power is the same way. It comes through faith mm -hmm. and believing. You have to believe. You know, uh, it's you read in the scriptures probably, many of you have, and the Bible says that God, uh, Jesus, could do no mighty works. Why? Because they had mm -hmm. unbelief. And they didn't believe. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, so many people in the scripture that we read about in that early church in the book of Acts, and as Jesus went about his earthly ministry, those people believed and they mm -hmm. followed him from place mm -hmm. to place. And it was astounding the mighty miracles mm -hmm. that he did. Yeah. And God is a God of miracles, and he does miracles today. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you know what? If you don't get a miracle, that's not the end of it. It's by faith uh, placed in the Word of God mm -hmm. and a promise of God that He gives to us that we're going to look at yes. here on healing, yes. and then it can happen. Amen. 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 Jesus went about teaching in the synagogues and preaching and healing all those that the devil mm -hmm. had brought sickness and disease on. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'm going to start here. We're going to, if you have a brochure, you can look at this. I was in the room tonight. I don't know if you do. But I kind of, uh, Carly built this when I wrote mm -hmm. it. I, I, let me say this. I felt inspired to write this, and that's why I did it, not just to have another thing to do. I felt like I was supposed to. Mm -hmm. And you and I were talking about mm -hmm. this the other day, how that, you know, in um, the world, not just in the church, but it's certainly in the church, mm -hmm. that the two big needs yes. are healing. Yeah. People need healing yes. and finances. Mm -hmm. Those are two of the biggest needs mm -hmm. that we have. And that's where the majority of our prayer requests yes, we talk will to come. People. Yeah, every day we yes. have people requesting neat prayer for healing. And that's why this is so important. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it really is. So when I went through this, um, I, I, I went through it uh, with the thought in mind, kind of like an attorney, a lawyer. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to build my case. Mm -hmm. I'm going to build it here. So uh, as we go through, that was my approach when I wrote this, okay? And I want to mention this too. For sure. the people watching online, if you want to follow along with this brochure, we have it online where you can get it. It's at redemptionchurch.com. 
slash healing, redemptionchurch.com slash healing, and you can click a button, download it, and have it. And then those of you in person, these are on the side tables. Mm-hmm. As you Great. Leave, so. Great. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about biblical healing, and the first point I want to make tonight is uh, from John 10, 10. You need to know who causes sickness and disease, okay? You need to know where that comes from. Now, you say, that sounds so simple, and I know that. Well, no, you know it maybe, but a lot of people don't know it. And I would say, even in this church, there's Mm -hmm. a lot of people that wouldn't know Mm -hmm. what I'm talking about Mm -hmm. tonight. John 10, 10, the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy, Let's say that together, what the devil's purpose is, to steal, to kill, kill, and to destroy. Okay, so that tells you what the enemy is up to. And if there is a category in your life where stealing, killing, and destroying is taking place, it won't be really hard Mm -hmm. to discover where that's coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that scripture reveals it. And he goes on to say, excuse me, My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And then the King James, of course, talks about abundant Mm -hmm. life. God wants to give us abundant life. If you're sick and have uh, disease um, in your life and sickness, well, that's not abundant Mm -hmm. life, is it? No, Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone would say, well, I have abundant life. You know, I've got this ailment or that one. No, no. Stealing, killing, and destroying Mm -hmm. uh, is what the devil does and brings sickness and disease upon people, Mm -hmm. all right? And a lot of other things too, but that's what we're talking about tonight. So God is a giver of abundant life. If you miss this, you're hopelessly lost in the Scripture. Uh, One thing I found out, you know, it's just like prophecy, you know, biblical prophecy. Mm-hmm. If, if you're looking at biblical prophecy and you read it, you know, it can all run together. You don't know when this happens and that happens. There has to be an mm-hmm. understanding and a flow through the Scripture. And that's the way this is. Um, if you understand that stealing, killing, and destroying come from uh, the enemy, Mm -hmm. then when you read the Bible Mm -hmm. and you go down through there, Carly, it's amazing. Okay, I know that comes Mm -hmm. from the enemy. God's Mm -hmm. not doing that to me. Mm -hmm. That's the enemy. But see, the devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. He's the father of lies, and he tells us, no, God's doing that because he's mad at you. God's doing that because he doesn't love Mm -hmm. you. How do I know that? Because I might have heard those words from the devil before. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's how, and we all hear it Mm -hmm. from time to time. He's a liar, and we know that. So you can't listen to that. You cannot listen to it. And you have to understand through the Bible, there's this thread that runs throughout that tells you that God is a good God. And he does good things for his people, including abundant life, health, healing, wholeness, and soundness. But then you say, well, I'm not experiencing that. Well, I understand that. Mm -hmm. I do understand that. You know, uh, at one time or the other, uh, I'm sure we all experience uh, that. But he's given us a way to understand God didn't do it to us. The enemy brought it, but now we can listen, fight, The good Mm -hmm. fight of faith. I'm not giving up. Amen. Well, that's genetic, and it's just passed down. I'm not giving up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just have to believe God more than you believe the devil and the lies of the devil. And even people that tell you the things. Before we move on, do you care if I mention what we're going to do tonight? No, go ahead. Just to give people online a a chance. So we're going to be praying over um, specific prayer requests for healing tonight. So those in the room have had the opportunity to give us prayer requests, and we've gotten many already. Mm -hmm. But we want to give everyone with us online the opportunity as well. So if you're online watching, in the little comment box right, right, right there, it's on the right side of the screen, 
just comment and tell us what your healing need is. Yeah. And we are going to be watching them live and praying for you. And then if you're on Roku, obviously you don't have a chat, but you can email us. So email us at info at redemptionchurch.com. Your healing prayer request and we'll pray with you tonight. Yes. And you know, I believe in the power of prayer mm -hmm. and we want to pray with you about what may be going on. And hopefully as we continue to share, there'll be some truths that will bring more light to you in this area. And some of you, you know the truth. It's just a refresher. Mm -hmm. But I, I will caution you. Don't. Th I've heard that before. I've heard that before. That is, uh, you know, the Bible uh, says faith comes by mm. and by hearing the Word of God. So it's not just that you heard it one time. Hearing and hearing and hearing. So people, people get off. They get off track. Oh, I've heard that. I know that. Well, what are you doing with it? That tells me everything mm -hmm. right there. What are you doing with it? Mm -hmm. Am That's I getting good. nosy? <laughs> it's good. Yeah, we it's need to be good. nosy in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, as a young Christian, um, I really believed that I couldn't please the Lord that God was unhappy with me. And I don't even know why I thought that. I don't even know why. You know, the enemy starts in your life early to try to derail you, get you off track, mm -hmm. you know. Maybe there was something um, that the enemy picked up in my life that God was going to use me at a mm -hmm. later time, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I had to really battle that. I had to really fight that. <laughs> and then I found 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, and the Amplified says mm -hmm. if you admit your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all your sin. And so once you do that, you admit what your sin is, mm -hmm. you confess it to the Lord, you can pick up and go on. And that brought me great faith, Carly, mm -hmm. because I didn't have to just be planted right there in that moment of mm -hmm. failure. Yeah. I could talk to the Lord about it, move forward, and then I'm right with God again. I'm right with Him again. And the enemy can't bring that and hold my past over my head. Mm -hmm. The enemy does that. Well, you can't be healed because you did this and you did that. Well, I understand, but we all are in that situation to some degree from time to time, aren't we? So we'd all be in a mm -hmm. mess. If, if he didn't make a way that we could get back in right standing with the Lord and in fellowship. Mm -hmm. We need to be in fellowship mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. We're in relationship, but we get out of fellowship. Mm -hmm. And we need to stay in fellowship with the Lord. And that scripture helps us be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you've got unconfessed sin in your life, it'll stop, it'll stop a lot of things. It'll stop the power of God mm -hmm. from working in your life many times. Now, I'm not going to say that God can't do what He wants to. I've seen Him heal people that weren't Christians, and you stand back and wonder, well, why? Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but, you know, it can happen. But, you know, if you don't get that miracle and you know, there, there's more ways to receive healing power from the mm -hmm. Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. But I was reading in 2 Corinthians uh, 2.11, and it says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. You know what that word advantage means? If you got unconfessed sin in your life, that's why you need 1 John 1.9. Mm -hmm. But if you don't confess it, uh, the enemy gets an advantage or the upper hand has victory or he outsmarts you. That's just the simple truth to it. He outsmarts you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's not smarter than you because you've got Jesus Christ on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than the one that's in mm -hmm. the world. Woo! Hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Well, I'm getting too radical. Okay, I'll settle down. <laughs> but anyway, um, he'll take advantage of us, for we are not, listen, ignorant of his devices. Mm -hmm. We're not ignorant of his devices. Okay, and you know, uh, and I didn't read the, the scripture right above 2 Corinthians 2.11, 
I didn't read that, but you know what it's talking about? Unforgiveness. Mm. Do you know how many people get in trouble because of unforgiveness? Have you ever been in trouble because you didn't forgive? <laughs> we don't want to admit it, but I yeah. sure have. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to release things and you have to let it go. Recently, um, I was uh, sharing some truths about unforgiveness. And, uh, and I had um, this gentleman and he um, sent me a, a message and he said, you know, now I understand wow. why I'm having such problems. Because he said, I've always been the kind of person who would hold grudges. And I could never let things go. And consequently, he suffered because of it. You know, I've heard people talk about instant forgiveness. I believe it. Yeah. When you stand praying, this is what the scripture says. When you stand praying, Mark 11, you forgive. In other words, you don't have to go through some big, long spiel. You don't have to get down on your knees. You don't have to be in a certain place. When you stand, Lord, I'm wrong. I forgive them. I release them. You know, um, recently, I've, I've had to really do this, Carly. Mm -hmm. Truth moment. Somebody just working against us, just working against mm -hmm. us, doing things that they shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing, working against God's church, you know? And, and, and it, it really got me. It really got me mm -hmm. for a, a little while. Not long, though, because <laughs> I've learned. And it's like, no, no. Mm -hmm. I release them, Father, in Jesus' name. I forgive them. You deal with them. They're putting their hand on your church. Mm -hmm. You be the one to deal Amen. with them. I'm not going to do it. It's amazing. You get up, you're free, and you go on. Mm -hmm. They're not stopping you. They're not mm -hmm. stopping you. But see, you know, you see people that get divorces and go through ugly divorces, really. And they're bitter, and they hold on, mm -hmm. and they think they're hurting the spouse that is no longer with them, the ex-spouse. No, you're not hurting them. They're yeah. going on. <laughs> I heard this story. <laughs> this is so funny. I heard this story about um, a man and a wife, and they've been married really for a good while, but they got in this little spat, and you know the husband said, well, bless God, I'm not going to be the one to say, I'm sorry, forgive me, <laughs> you know. And so he, he left for a few days, and, and he could just imagine, you know, his wife was probably just wringing her hands, crying, and, you know, just having such a hard time with this. And so one night, he drove by his house. Just I'm just going to see if I can see anything. Drove by his house. There his wife was. The draperies were open, and she was watching TV and eating a big thing of ice cream. <laughs> So he said, okay, I see right there. It's not working. I'm going to get it right. <laughs> so see, we, we think we're, we're getting over on someone else. No, they're eating ice cream. You might as well, you might as well uh, forgive and get you some ice cream, right? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. All right. So the confession of sin will uh, close the door on the advantage that the devil has on our life. And we need to understand that. That's so important. The day we live in, people, uh, I mean, sin is like a lifestyle. Nobody even thinks anything about it, even some Christians. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I just don't think that way. I think mm -hmm. the Bible is true, and I think that we live holy, righteous lives as much as we can. We're not perfect. We mess up. But you don't live a lifestyle, habitual lifestyle of sin, to me, indicates mm -hmm. that you don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Habitual lifestyle of sin. If you read 1 John over in there, you'll, you know, you'll begin to see that. Amen? Amen. All right. So our first uh, biblical healing point tonight is that the enemy still kills and destroys, but God gives us that abundant life where health, healing, and wholeness can mm -hmm. take place. And then the second thing I want to talk to you about tonight is how um, 
God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And again, we see that this oppression mm -hmm. of sickness and disease comes from the enemy. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came on the scene and everywhere he went, he dealt with the sickness and the mm -hmm. disease that people had in their life, and they, they, they wanted to cling to him. They wanted to come to him, and he took care of all the issues that they were facing, and there, there were many, many people. You know, I'm just reminded, uh, you know, on the road to Jericho, and um, Jesus uh, was on that road, and there was a blind man, Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, mm -hmm. you know, we'd learn about that in Sunday school when we're children, but it's such a powerful mm -hmm. story, Carly. It is. And um, he heard that Jesus was coming. Well, see, he had to hear something prior to that. He had to hear all the people that Jesus had cleansed the leper, that he has mm -hmm. raised the dead, that he had taken uh, care of people, delivered them from the powers of darkness, and he had heard all that, and so when he was there on that road that day when Jesus came, he just started yelling. You know, when you really want something from the Lord, you don't care. You don't care who doesn't like what you're doing. His, Jesus' disciples didn't like mm -hmm. it. Hold it down, hold it down. And the Bible said he cried louder, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. I've cried that before. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. And he cried out so loud that he got Jesus' attention. It's so interesting about Bartimaeus being blind. He, it says he's the son of Timaeus. And I looked that up, and it means blind man. I don't know if that means his father was blind and he was blind. In other words, it was passed on. It could be that. I don't know. I can't say for certainty. But this Bartimaeus, he had this special coat, Carly. Mm -hmm. And this coat was given to him, I'm sure, by the religious mm -hmm. uh, leadership to signify he was actually blind. And because of that, he could probably beg and receive alms and, you know, uh, to help him with his needs. Now, isn't that interesting? I think about that today. We have people, you know, around on corners begging for money instead of going to work, you know, look like healthy people. You don't know that, but I, I have read things that they take advantage of people. They're begging and they don't need it. But see, I'm sure it happened in that day too, so they gave you this coat or mantle that you would mm -hmm. put on. And so he was wearing that, and when he heard Jesus coming, and he, he was yelling as loud as he could, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy upon me. I'm blind. I can't see. Mm -hmm. I, I need you to heal me, Jesus. I've heard you have healed all these other people and the great things that mm -hmm. you've done for them. I've heard it, and I want you to do it for me, Jesus. And he had faith. And he reached out and he threw off that coat. I'm not identifying mm -hmm. with that anymore. I'm not identifying with it. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came and healed him. And the Bible said, go, your faith has made you whole. See, he believed. Mm -hmm. We've got to believe uh, for healing, we've got to believe what we read in the Bible. And not just that it's for someone else, mm -hmm. but it's for us. Yes. He, say that. Say, healing is for me. Healing is for me. Healing is for me. Healing is for me. And you must believe that. And we've already seen. The devil is the one that steals, kills, and destroys. God through Jesus Christ, gives abundant life. And then here we see that Jesus went about doing good things. What are good things? Healing is good. I, I've actually heard people say this before, and I want you to listen to me here. 
Well, I, I've got this sickness for the glory of God. That's not scriptural. If you want to glorify God, blind Bartimaeus glorified God. He got healed, and he believed God, and he received deliverance from blindness. You're not, if, if, the, if the religious world puts that on you, you throw it off like mm -hmm. he threw off that coat. Mm -hmm. Don't accept it and mm -hmm. don't receive it mm -hmm. because that is not what God has for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's good. Now, I could go on and say a lot of other things tonight, but we've got to pray. We have a lot of prayer requests yes. that we have received as well. There, there's no way that we can pray for all of them, and I told mm -hmm. you that originally, but they will be prayed over. Yes. All of these requests will be prayed over through people that have faith in their heart, and they know that Jesus Christ is the healer. Now, before we start this, I want you to know in the room, and I want you to know online tonight, Jesus is for you. He is not against you. Jesus took stripes upon his back, Isaiah tells us. <coughs> Excuse me. He took stripes upon his back that you could be healed of sickness and disease. It can be something that's just come up on you. It can be a long-standing situation. It can be genetics. It doesn't matter. Jesus Christ heals. Amen. And so that's what we believe. We don't believe what man tells us if it's contrary to that, we believe the Word of God. And so we're going to pray over these requests right now. If you'll just give me a few of those. And Here's let's the take person. one from online. Will you read that to us? Um, yes, Judy has requested prayer for pain all over her entire body for almost 40 years. Wow. She wants to be set free today. Pain for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carly, let's you and I join hands. Father, right now, we pray for Judy. I want this congregation here. You release your faith right now. We pray for Judy. We come against that pain. We don't know the source of that, but we curse it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the work of the devil, still killing and destroying. Mm -hmm. We command you to loose her body in Jesus' Amen. name. And Father, we just thank you for raising her up with health, healing, wholeness and soundness in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Let that anointing flow to her right there. There's no distance, Lord, thank in you, the Lord. spirit. Let it flow. And I thank you and I praise you for what you are doing for her right now thank in you, the name Jesus. of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And we've got someone here um, and uh, they need healing from fever. It's an unknown cause. And so we're going to pray over that. Someone that's suffering in their lower back, uh, Tim. And then we've got Bob uh, is to have open heart surgery this Friday. And we believe, uh, you know, God can do something before Friday. Amen. But if it requires surgery, he'll see him through and he can raise him up. Amen. Amen. And then um, healing someone for their bladder and supernatural uh, recovery as they're in rehab. We're going to pray over that. And we pray for someone that's getting ready to have hip surgery. Okay? Will you stretch your hands up here right now? Yeah, all of these, yeah. And we're going to pray over these requests. Mm -hmm. Father, in Jesus' name, you've heard each request that we brought before you tonight. And Lord, we pray over them. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come forth. Lord, your word says, by Jesus' stripes, they are the healed. Amen. We take that position right now over these people you, and all Lord. these various um, problems that they're facing. And there is nothing too difficult for you, Lord, nothing. And so we speak deliverance over them and we speak restoration uh, in their body, the various parts of their body, and we thank you for it. Lord, right now, this heart, heart issues, there are more thank people you, with heart issues. We speak thank right you, now over that. You, in Jesus' you, name, the delivering power thank of you, Jesus Lord. Christ, I thank you, Father. Jesus went thank about you, doing good and healing all 
that we're oppressed. Heart disease is not above the name of Jesus. Jesus' name, I speak over heart disease. Lord, heart valves, I thank you that that you can restore in that area of the valve, Father, the damage that is there. Amen. They can be every whit whole, Father, and we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you know, right now, <clears throat> I just want to say this to you. There are many people suffering, mm-hmm. many people suffering. And like we said in the beginning, so many people have health issues. But when you give us your request and those that come online, mm-hmm. We're going to believe with you for miracles, signs, and wonders to be done. Mm -hmm. And you know, God says He watches over His Word to perform it. Mm -hmm. We've talked about healing tonight. Let it sink deep within your heart, deep within your mind. You meditate on these things. The problems that you have in your body, deal with it now. Scripturally, Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you know, we're not against doctors and medication and all that. You know, do what you you have to do. But I'm I'm talking about in the spirit realm. Don't just let things go on and not deal with it. Mm -hmm. Deal with it scripturally, okay? Praise the Lord. We want to take this moment right now. And I want to speak to people that are listening online. And there could even be some people in this house tonight, I don't know, that do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, you have no promise that you'll have tomorrow. Now, we hope we do, but there's no promise of that. We have no promise that God is not coming back for His church really soon. And you got to be ready to go. Mm-hmm. If you're not in his family, you won't go to heaven. That is for sure. But you need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you've never prayed that prayer, I'm going to lead you in a prayer in just a moment. And it's simple faith. If you believe that Jesus went to the cross, that he died there, shed his blood to cleanse you from all sin... And then he was raised again on that third day. If you believe that, then you can have eternal life. But then there are some that are here and maybe online that are like the prodigal son. You've known the Lord, but you're out of fellowship with him. Don't let time go by. If you hear the voice of the Lord, don't harden your heart. This is the time. Well, I'm too busy. I've got to do this. I've got to do... Mm -mm. Don't do that. That's dangerous. Don't do that. Prepare to meet the Lord. Prepare to meet... um, This world is such a mess right now. Mm -hmm. It's in chaos. It's upside down. People don't know what's right and wrong. Don't... Don't... Get in that mess. Get in God's house. Get in His family. And so if you're in either one of those situations tonight, if you'll pray with me now. Now, if you don't mean it, nothing will happen. But if you mean it, Jesus is moving in your house. I'm talking about your heart. And you can be in right fellowship again with the Lord. Just say this with me. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I accept you you. as my Savior Savior. and my Lord. Lord. I give my life to you from this day forward forward. and forever. Forever. I'll live for you you. and I'll serve you. You You are my Lord. Lord. I confess it right now. And I, I want those that are away from the Lord, I want you to say this. Say, Jesus, I'm coming back to you. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to receive me. From this day forward, I'm not turning my back on you, but I'm going forward in you. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
that means you can be a part of the Father's house. Isn't that wonderful? I get so excited when people come to the Lord. Now, you must let us know what you've done. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're online, let the people there, uh, maybe in your family or those around, or call somebody that you can share it with. Or, but for sure, Carly, you've got, you've got that yes. here tonight where yes. you can see. Yes. And let us know that mm -hmm. you prayed that prayer. Yes. And for the prodigal, we welcome you home. Mm -hmm. There's a robe of righteousness, and there's a ring mm -hmm. and a great big barbecue for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Praise mm -hmm. God. Let's just give the Lord praise tonight. Can we do that? <clears throat> Thank you for being a part of the service tonight. We're so glad that you joined us. And, you know, join us for Sunday service at mm -hmm. 1030. Um, you know, we're on um, Sunday, we're expecting yes. great things to happen. Yes. We had a wonderful service yes. this past Sunday, didn't yes, we, with Dr. We did. Evans? Oh my gosh, that was so special. Yes. Yeah. Do you, you have anything you want to no, say? No, I'm just going to say, I think it was so special tonight. And so many prayer requests came in more than what we could cover. But those were all covered in that prayer. And I know both of us are believing for good reports. Yes. That people were healed tonight and that we're going to hear good reports. And mm -hmm. we can come back with testimonies to share yes. from this in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll just say to you uh, good night and God bless. We love you.